Wisdom is, is an application of what it is that you have learned. And so, the actual etymology of the word dat comes from the first time that we find that word is in right there in Genesis where it says that Adam yada et chava, that Adam knew Eve. And it corresponds to that level of intimacy, that oneness that Adam and Eve were joined as one, as the Torah puts it, and they gave birth, and Eve and Chava gave birth to Cain, their first child. And so on, a, on an intellectual level, that has to do with merging, merging two opposites. What are we merging over here? We are merging the first two spheres which we spoke about, the sphere of Chochmah and the sphere of Bina which are vastly different as we studied in our previous classes. Chochmah is all about that lightning bolt. It's about that inspiration which is there on a fleeting moment. What is Bina? Bina is taking that inspiration and then putting it into compartments, filing information, building information. The word Bina is from the word to build, etc. But that is all still on the intellectual realm. One may know a lot on the intel intellectually, but experientially, in order to really bring it down, there's the need for the merging of what is called Chochmah and, and Bina, and in Kabbalistic terms that is called Abba and Ima, also called Ava, the union of Ava, is done via Da'at. But that is that key that opens up the six uh, spherot. And so what that means is as follows, that the emo we've got two levels of emotions. We've got the natural emotions that we have, and we've got higher levels of emotions. So we see that an animal has emotions, and we see, and you know, very differently, we have a child, a young child, a little uh, three-year-old, uh, that we uh, that throws a tantrum or that likes to eat certain foods that are not the best for them or that plays with kids that are not so good for them and as as that child grows up you know they could exhibit different negative emotional uh, traits that may be harmful for them well what do we, I mean that what do we do in that situation that's the natural emotions and that many people say that's the way I was born. That's the way my parents are. That's the way my father acted. That's the way I am. That's it. End of story. Here's where the Zohar, the great wisdom of the Zohar is so amazing. The Zohar tells us that that is the key of six, meaning that via that, and the way that Tanya puts it, moach shalit ala that the, that the mind rules over the heart. The heart is the seat of the emotions. We could control our emotions. In other words, we could magnify the positive emotions, we could uh, diminish the negative emotions and their effect that, we, that, that they have on us, and we could essentially control the cravings that we have within our heart. How? Through, the, the, through the, that deliberation, that depth of that that is able to open up the key to all six. And so that analogy of, of that key is just basically just when we, when, when we, just like we have a key and we want to go into a room. So we've got, for example, imagine a room of chesed, a room of kindness. Well, great, you want to open up that room when you want to use that room. So you've got the key for it, excellent. Now, what if you don't want to have too much kindness? What if kindness could be destructive? What, could, what if kindness, if, if that person doesn't deserve kindness, you have to lock that door. So you lock that door, great. Who locks that door? You, who's you? The dot. Your dot, your godly consciousness over there just decided to close the door. Next, you want to open up the door to gavura, to discipline, to strength, to, to put your foot down. Open up the door to that. You're able to do that. Amazing. Well, I don't feel like doing it. I don't feel, well, that's the normal emotions that we're born with. 
but now to re-implant in a sense within us the higher emotions here's where we do the work we do the inner work of now employing that that consciousness within us that is able to now decide what the right thing to do in each situation and of course this is like a lifelong process and we need the dot to work in tandem with all of the midot and essentially when the midot are born from the dot then we've got what is called tikkun midot the fixing of the midot and way easier said than done but essentially by understanding that we do have that power we have the power within us the power is not no one no one else controls our emotions they're all reactions to other things right that we do we control our emotions essentially by employing that dot within us and we have that uh, that inner power to either follow the emotion or do what is called hasechadat. Hasechadat is found in the Talmud, means to just put your mind away from something. Meaning you've got an emotion, the emotion is like coming at you and saying, uh, think about me, think about me. You know, I've got this anxiety, this paranoia, this, this depression, this whatever it is. So your dad could just say, Hesachadat, well, I'm not thinking about that right now. I've got, oh, I've got this bill to pay, I gotta do it. Put the dot on the side. Put, put the, the dot says, let's put that on the side. We're focusing on that. Why? Because I got the key. The key says, I'm closing that door of anxiety, right? Of, of sadness, whatever it is. The door's closed right now. When the time is right, then I'll open that and I'll deal with it in the, in the proper way. And so that's the key of six. The idea of dot is the key of six. We have the, uh, we've got that key within us and it's right here within our mind. Now, on a uh, biological level, you know, that part of the brain, the, um, the, well, we've got the amygdala, which is constantly coming at us and is just throwing all types of anxiety, etc., etc. The frontal cortex actually corresponds to that idea of that and we, went, we know that when we, we have the ability to control our mind and uh, you know, superb athletes do this, um, um, martial, martial artists and uh, you, you know, uh, um, uh, in the army commandos are, are able to do that. They're able to control their mind in order to really yield the ultimate higher outcome that they uh, that they choose, right? That they work on, and so through hard through work and through training the dot and really doing a lot of that work of studying, studying, uh, studying the inner aspects of Torah, studying, and now it's going to bring us to the fifth big idea of inner consciousness, of doing uh, what what we call uh, meditation or prayer of connecting these opposites. So we spoke about that on an intellectual level and how we have the ability then to control the intellect, control the emotions. Now all this brings us to number five, the inner consciousness. So the inner, really that, that is really that inner consciousness. Because when we think about it, who really, who are we? What is going on inside of us? It's really our consciousness. It's really, our, that, that's really who we are. That's, that's our higher self. Now how do we, which is really our dot. And our dot is in our spirituality. And our dot is in our uh, e emotional aspects. It's not our physicality. Our dot really is everything. Really brings together our intellect, our emotions, our spirituality, our physicality. It all comes together within dot. Dot puts together, merges these two opposites. Merges like heaven and earth in a sense. Merges the chachma, the higher dot, the lower dot. And it all comes together via, uh, via our, our inner consciousness. And so uh, the, uh, Kabbalah explains that the whole reason for the exile of the Jewish people in Egypt is because there was this loss of dat, 
a lack of dat. And so they went into exile. When the mind is lost and then there is a mitzvah and there is an exile. And how did they come out of Egypt? That there was a reinfusion of dat, once again, by who? By Moses came down and really infused dat and, uh, and eventually giving us the Torah, right? And which is that, that book of dat, of consciousness, uh, that was given to humanity. And, uh, and so that loss of dat is really the beginning of exile. And so, it, so we learn in, in, in the books that actually the letter which is compared to dat is the letter aleph, which is also the letter of learning. Aleph is from the word alfecha, to teach. So there's aleph of, of which of chachma, there's aleph of bina. But then really the aleph puts together these two opposites and we've got the, uh, we learn the, the yud on top and then the yud on the bottom, which corresponds to higher level chachma. And over here we've got our lower level of, we could call it bina. And the merging of the two is that merging of dat, which is compared to that letter vav, really, because it draws it down. That's what dat really does.